Okay. Okay. So um, just to re re recap, we did introductions. We, we're led into this um, overview of this for uh, if anyone re watches the recording of this, and we're just looking at a high level of what some of the edits and revisions were to um, the SDR policy report volume two. So, um, you know, it's a simple edit, but I, I want everybody to understand that there's there's a proposed short-term rental policy framework. There's a core short-term rental policy that kind of drives all of this. Uh, we did, I believe we added that. Um, and right here, right, uh, for folks who can see me highlighted, mm -hmm. um, that, that, that was a core policy that's that's driving all this. And underneath that, we have growth control policy options that were presented in volume one. We have a density proximity uh, tool that was presented in volume one. And then there's an addendum in this volume that really, that's what I'm saying, uh, kind of reframes it as a, as an actual policy and the tools kind of a, um, the technical implementation of that policy. And then there's um, additional policy that is uh, in, in volume two, uh, with respect to um, short-term rental occupancy. And that's in this volume again, because that was a big question at the end of uh, the July meeting. It was a footnote in that volume of, hey, that's one of the things we'll look at very near term. And um, we're strongly encouraged, hey, that near term is now. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and we did, and it was a, a good exercise to work through. And I think it really helped us better understand how it fits into this. And I still like the graphic. It's not, you know, the most glamorous or snazzy, but it's when you think about it, you have core SDR policy. Uh, it's driving things at a at a citywide, neighborhood level, and next door, right? And so these these policies are trying to achieve um, outcomes at that level. So growth control policy is looking citywide. That's where we talk about the aggregate number of SDRs and how that grows or doesn't grow, right? Density, density and proximity is at a neighborhood street level. Um, so when people think about, I mean, that was another big uh, question mark was um, short-term rentals near the beach, right? They're, they're clustering in these, um, you know, they're gathering these little clusters because that's where people want to, um, to go to. So how do we address that? So we came up with this proximity policy and a proximity tool to kind of um, break up those clusters uh, over time and then um, also um, keep uh, a threshold of, um, of density within those those neighborhoods or at a street level. Um, and, and again, occupancy is, is really just trying to address like the next door or, or home, STRs that are directly adjacent to other uses, whether that's, or maybe it might be another STR, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so high level, Try to get the zoom, and hopefully no one gets seasick. <laughs> Come on, oh brother! Um, we try page down instead of scrolling down. That was, that's it. That's the page you want. Up, up a little bit. Yes. That's now you got two pages. I yeah. know. For some reason, it wants to. I'm just going to go back to one thing you said, though, because yeah. I want to be clear about it. Um with around the proximity is it's not that we're trying to control or say there what we were looking at is not a neighborhood like south the whole beach area is we were looking at it block by block and even within that neighborhood there were blocks that have two STRs and then the next block over has 18 you know 18 yeah. and so the attempt of the proximity catchment area is to allow short term rentals down there but the distribution would have a a more um, fluid or comprehensive around the city versus these companies. And, and some, very few, well, I think only three or four blocks um, down south and one up here, are there's just a, a catchment area with seven or eight homes in them right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of this, so it's not really preventing them. It's, it's about distribution and density. Some streets are very dense, others are not. So the, the other paragraph, thanks for clarifying, mm -hmm. clarifying that. Um, the other paragraph that we added was regarding, it was just a quick um, kind of clarification on where, where some of these were coming from. I mean, some were, some of these policies are firmly rooted 
um, and more quantitative considerations, you know, especially when you look at like growth control and, um, you know, the, the number of SDRs or how you grow from that number if you do it all. Um, but there's, there's the other side of that livability survey and a little, the other side of that is that some of these policies are, um, we use the word value driven, but they're in response to more of the qualitative feedback. Uh, we still use, you know, I, I still think they're rooted in, you know, technical process that lands there, but it was more of um, trying to think of a good example. I don't think we included it in this paragraph, but that's okay. That's you want to keep moving? Yeah, I did, Joe. I don't know. You want to keep going down? Yeah, because I just, yeah, yeah it's right. really more. Does anybody have a problem with anything that's being said here? I think is what we're yeah, yeah. looking yeah. at. So, we um, this this section will look very similar to, to the one that was presented last time. It's we flipped it to, I think that was probably one of the major changes. We flipped it to lead into with the section. So it's the proximity policy addendum. So it's taking the proximity tool um, that was presented last, you know, back in July, which is a um, technical tool. It's a GIS tool. So um, it's done with mapping online um, and it takes a map and it does a catchment area uh, of a hundred hundred foot radius, and then it looks to see how many um, currently licensed short term rentals are within that catchment area. Uh, we have some recommendations. Committee has some recommendations around uh, the, how many SDRs should be in there. Um, when we presented this back in July, uh, that number was five short term rentals per catchment area. Um, we still, as a baseline, recommend that. However, the additional consideration this go around is high high occupancy homes. Is what we're calling high occupancy homes, um, and those are homes with um, five or more bedrooms. Um, and the other consideration on this is: um, Do we want to within that catchment area count just the short number of short term rentals, or do we want to count? Um, <laughs> the the number of occupants there because that was a question that was asked by by council back in July is like well catchment area why aren't you using occupants so we explored both of those uh, thoughts this go around um, let's go to the graph yeah let's see if that's can... a good I like that graph not that graph yeah, no, no the, not the, the table the table yeah the table there we go because I think as Joe said if anybody if you've read the bullets it just kind of outlined what Michael said which I don't think any of that is new those were kind of captured our discussion last month but maybe Michael you can take a minute to explain what sure. what we're looking at on sure. this so everybody seems real clear on them because here's where the numbers come in that yeah. I think we need to be confident we have so are clear we we looked at um, it's just analysis of current high occupancy home high occupancy homes and their ca associated catchment areas, and so what we did is we we pulled through the list um, as of as of October uh, pulled through the list of what we would consider high occupancy homes. Um, we looked at the number of short term rentals within a hundred foot catchment area of those homes, and we using the approach that we recommend the five per hundred foot. Um, how, how many would be allowed in there right now? Are they at that threshold? Are they below it? Are they exceeding it? And that's if we count them as one, right? But if we count high occupancy homes as two SDRs, obviously that number changes. And so the thought was, well, how does that change? Just how many, how, how many homes are being impacted by this? Um, so in the first line, there, it, the catchment area that you looked at that had the home that has 18, which is there's only one in town. Mm -hmm. Currently, there are three SDRs in that catchment area. And so two more would be allowed under the original policy, but only one more would right. be allowed under the new policy. Right. 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 Yep. So the quick the coding, which I think we was suggested at our last meeting, um, obviously, we got really creative here with red, green, and yellow. Um, the green indicates that is a catchment area where growth is, uh, there, need, there could be growth. The yellow is it's 
kind of frozen where it is, and the red is it would be over it. it and so, so on that first column with our proposal, you'll see the red, there are just a couple over, a couple frozen, and then there's some, some consistency. There really isn't a huge change, but maybe you, you could read the summary numbers or something. I, does, is it clear this table? Well, I, th I like the way Joel kind of went through that. I think that would be an appropriate <clears throat> an example just mm -hmm. to make it absolutely clear. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll pick in the presentation version of it, I'll pick an example. That, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, I mean, if you, if you want, I mean, the, the thing is, I think one of the takeaways is, you know, there's not a ton of them out there right now, right? Um, and if you apply an updated policy where they count as two, um, you know, it grows from two to, as far as one's exceeding it, that, it, that would be frozen, it just grows from two to four. Um, well, and this, I, this is really good. I really like this. And it is something that has come up fairly frequently in discussions with Leila. Mm -hmm. So this, I think you've done a really good job of clarifying that. Okay. Great. Well, great. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Well, my only thought is that I'm looking at this is maybe I'll, I'll just make sure that those are colorblind safe um, colors there so oh. somebody can't see them. I want them to know if there's some kind of gradient. Um, let's see. So that can, this didn't change it out, did it? I don't um, think no. This, this didn't oh, we change. added. Um, Which part of it? We just changed the, I think, the, the, the marking so it was a little clearer, I think, from last time. But I don't believe we changed this. We'll see. Um, no, I don't think. Again, if we did change it, it was just we redid the order. We didn't add or take away any content, really. Yeah, we added the one thing in the key findings that we changed was uh, this bullet right here. I'll try to zoom in on that. So we can... On the next page? It's just, you know, we're. It's it's a little bit tough when we're so close to the material. It, it seems like an obvious takeaway is that it would be you know problematic to to and challenging to to count the number of occupants or license based on the number of occupants. Um, and so you know we wanted to put some text in here that hopefully conveys some scenarios where it, it, there would be some obvious challenges in implementing an occupancy based approach. To licensing within, like, say, a threshold, right? So that's an important point, and I'm just wondering if those those of us who didn't mull over this and rewrite it 97 times <laughs> um, can offer. Is it clear? Is it not clear? What could make it more clear? I think it's clear. I think okay. the example is good. Okay. Anybody have problems with it? Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the thing that, and I, I usually avoid saying things like, it's just simple, but boy, uh, in a simple base, uh, home-based calculation, you just count the number of rest yards. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's it's pretty easy. And I think it, and it, it still accomplishes the policy outcomes that you want in a less complicated way, so. Uh, I think that's the takeaway there. So, um, and do we answer? Um, Danielle had a question that she emailed to Cheryl. Do did we answer that in here, or did should we talk about it and see if we should answer that in here? Can, Danielle, could you kind of? Well, I mean, it's kind of a broad statement, but it's more so of just <clears throat> logistically, um, you know. The I'm I'm I first have to say I am definitely not opposed to the hundred feet. I think this is a, this is great. I think this is great work that we're doing. My my the point I brought up was the logistics and implementing this for the city, and they're already strapped in their STR program department. So to to implement this is 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 fantastic, and I think it should you know hopefully they'll go for it, and this is great. But my concern is the fact that the city allows pre-inspection so if someone's looking to buy a house for short-term rental purposes they contract the city to come out and do a pre-inspection that pre-inspection is paid for it's done the owners are excited they're like okay great um i'm gonna go ahead and make an offer on the house now because it's it's contingent on that great this happens a lot a lot 
it's contingent on that. And they're like, okay, great. Well, a closing takes 30 to 45 days. If somebody else applies for that license in that hundred foot halo, and there was only one left, that person is purchasing that home based on the fact that they passed their pre-inspection. They're going to then purchase this home um, based on that knowledge. And then that license is applied by a neighbor and caught up. Now they're out. Now they've purchased a house that they've had a pre-inspection on. The city has passed. They have in ideology that they're going to get the license once the house, the ink is dry and they've signed for the house because they can't do that. They can't apply for their short term rental license until that house is purchased mm -hmm. and in their name. Um, so there's this well, now the chances of this happening, who knows how often this is going to happen or if it's going to happen. I think it will happen because this is a lot. This is a huge process in, in, in my line of work. It's the first thing I do when someone calls me and says, I'm looking at a rental. My first response to them is get your pre-inspection. Mm. How, how is so, it different than the overall growth cap in effect? Um, you know, with the overall growth cap, whatever it is, whether it's, well, we don't know what that is yet, but, but yeah. whatever it is, whether yeah. it's 17 and a half percent, two homes or, or a fixed number, if someone is buying a house and they want it to be a short-term rental, they go through the pre-inspection and then the waiting list is full overall, which still applies. Correct. So how is it different? Um, that's a great question. That would be more so of a question for Chris or Scott because they see that side of it, I guess, um, with the STR program. I, I feel like there's a liability there for the city to offer pre-inspections, to get them done, Maybe there's a way around this by having that client sign something saying, I know that's not our job, but there's logistics to this. It, so, it, yeah. So, yeah, I get the logistics. And I just want to go back to one, just a couple of This highlighted passage that we're discussing mm -hmm. is a direct, is, is about option two, which mm -hmm. is the counting the number right? of STRs. Yeah. Yeah, I just before I went on from uh, from proximity, I just wanted to make sure that right, if that question comes up, that right. And when I I responded to Danielle, and I, I think it's a legitimate question and concern, but it seems to me it would be a it could be resolved if the city is going to continue, which isn't our right wheelhouse. Uh, if the city continues these, which I didn't even know you did pre, what are they called? Pre-inspections. Pre-inspections. That would be the time to say, oh, well, we, we the citywide growth cap is met. So there's A, there's a wait list right there. Mm -hmm. So then B, oh, wh where is your home located? Mm -hmm. Boom. I look at the catchment area. There's a wait list for this catchment area. Okay. Or it's open. Right. And then C would be perhaps a recommendation or suggestion down the road after the city makes a decision is, is we could, the city has to decide about the pre-inspections. Maybe there's some kind of a, a hold you could get. I don't know. You yeah. know, 60 days, 30 yeah. days. Yeah. I don't know that, but I think it can be solved. Yes. I mean, what I'm communicating I think so to you too. is, I think that is, that is a, a, a good point to bring up because we're not aware of that. Yeah. And I, but I do think some recommendations could be made when we have a better understanding of what the city decides to do to help with that. Okay. And then see the other thing I told you is I think he really highlighted the need is after we get something approved from the city, maybe a task for us or as the city wants to do it, we need an educational push with this out yes. into the community for management um, businesses like yours for real estate I agents. think real estate's going to be and, another and one. because the tool to check this is very easy and available yes. yes so it's it's not that it's so complicated it's just that we have to make sure people have access and understanding that this is part of the process now it's changing right. the process right it's always going to be difficult because it's changed but, but the education the, the education key. piece will be yes. critical and my only my only other comment would be in so the and I don't know how this is me just being naive on how this this catchment area program thing works but I've seen it I've used it it's very user-friendly easy to use 
Is it real time? Yes. What's well, a, it's, it's real time? It's real, it, sh it, it must be real enough time. It could be a, a week or two out of date, but it can't be six months out of date. Right. right. A week or two is also... How many houses are sold in Manzanita a year? A lot, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, uh, just from my experience and everybody calling on them, but probably not. My worry is a week, if you're putting a contingent offer on a house, a week is a very long time. Um, so that would be the other side of it too, is making sure that this is something that is real time or that's has a clause that says this is updated every 24 hours or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And again, and uh, the other way, which is not as technically pleasing as the little catchment areas, is you can go to the city's list of homes on a specific street and you can literally that list them. is not up to date well those okay. again those oh, are, we're, 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 and i know i, know. I don't want us to make a decision because we're we're concerned and i think Catherine even said this is we need to make a decision based on these things functioning yes. we're not going to make a decision yes. because we're that, afraid they won't function and yes those issues really become staff issues right. yes. yes and yes. and one of the things that layla has ask for is time to implement fantastic to come up with these it, it, these issues are yes. going to be there and they need to fix it and part of what they need to fix is the website and i have communicated with layla about that because okay, because it is we we've had people call us for emergency contact and we haven't been in emergency contact for that house for over a year mm -hmm. so there is a lot of outdated mm -hmm. information but i do know that that is a priority for layla it is which it i is. appreciate yeah again like i said though you could do the old-fashioned thing which is stand at the house look around <laughs> yeah <laughs> and count the, because there's a which flash, would also there's work. A flash on there. yeah so um which would also and work there is, yeah. and then there's an and, and i'm old-fashioned so i like that yeah. i mean so it's not um you know, if you had a situation where buyer went by the day, you can say walk the street and go behind and count the signs you see. Correct. I mean, you can figure it out. I'm not saying that should be our policy or the way to go with it, right? But again, but if all else fails, if all else fails, old fashioned way works. Hour window, works you get out on I, I think Linda's point is key, though. It's 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 our job is to suggest policy right staff's job is to figure out how to implement it. and to weigh it yes and, and yes. we shouldn't mix the two right. yes right. and i don't by any means want to mix that into what we're doing for me it's just what i see on a daily basis and i think bringing these things up also helps us tighten absolutely our policy yes. but i think everything that's being suggested is fantastic yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But I want to go back to that bullet because that yeah. bullet is talking about the option two, which is not an, an option that um, I think I can safely say we all are in favor of, which is counting the number of bodies in, in, in each house, where this scenario would be avoided in option one because you're simply counting the house, not the people, people. in the house. Correct. And, and so I think this example was put up there to illustrate the um, problematic nature of counting it. Yes. Um, and because again, on a street, you have the STRs and then maybe you have a second homeowner who has their whole family there. So you're going to have, right. you can't count bodies. No, it's, gonna it's be too hard. Very, There's very, too many variables. Very, very, that. Too many. <laughs> yeah. It can be problematic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so I don't, I, we, other than that bullet, I don't think we changed a whole lot in here. Um, again, there, we might have done some clarifying text to make sure that we're you know somewhat consistent calling them high occupancy homes mm -hmm. um, in here. There's kind of a, a journey from the beginning of the section to the end where we you know we call them high occupancy. The, the formal term we're looking for is something like high occupancy homes. I think that's a great term. <laughs> yeah, I think it's easy to understand. Yeah, I mean, that was our whole goal. Is we want something that people. Everyone reads it and says, oh, I get what that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are, I mean, all this gets down to, you know, need objectives and we have our final policy recommendations. We got five or more bed uh, sleeping areas. <laughs> They're considered high occupancy. Um, if they're high, and high occupancy homes should be counted as two when implementing proximity policy, right? And, um, and then our recommendation is that the proximity policy should Policy should not consider the number of permitted occupants. Um, so that would be the option two. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of a, it's a odd way of having a policy recommendation to as a negative, you know. Um, but we wanted to be real clear there. And may, maybe the other thing that I, it was there last time, but I think it's always an important part 
an important point is that when we were looking at you know what are um, what are the the number of bedrooms that we want to kind of say is is that threshold between what we call a standard STR or high occupancy STR? It was the um, nine point six occupants average, which I think Joe, you recheck the numbers or those still. I, mean, I don't really think that was high. Is that that's that's what it is, huh? Yeah. So yeah, uh, and the, and the way we did that, can you go down to the chart? Not that chart. Uh, <laughs> I was like, that would give you really high numbers. No, no, no. It is that. It is that chart. Well, it's it's this chart was there. It is there, that one. Uh, <laughs> black and white. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That one. That yeah. one. Yeah. So we took this off the website. There was one home that allowed three occupants. That which is another thing that has to be changed on the website because if our maximum occupants permitted is two per bedroom plus four, right? There shouldn't be anything under six. But nevertheless. It's probably what the homeowner said. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to allow three. Yeah, I so that's what it says on the website. But yep. it's it's kind of it's a little confusing. But anyway, we took what it said on the website, and we said, okay, if there's one with three, that's a total of three people. Four with nine, that's a total of thirty six people. Um, it's, sorry, sixty nine with four, sixteen with six. I don't know how to multiply that that fast. But anyway, we added up that the, all those columns and we ended up with a total number of maximum occupants permitted. And then we divided by the number of short-term rentals and we ended up with 9.6. Okay. That's how we got that number. Okay, that makes sense. And then how we got the second number was to change the ones that were, because um, you can we can see on the website how many um you yeah, so like number the eight, the 59 at eight mm -hmm. would now be 59 at six because right. uh, eight was two bedrooms plus four people. So right. now it's two bedrooms plus two people. So it takes it down to six. So I just changed all the numbers, did the same thing, multiply them times each other, totaled them all up, mm -hmm. divided by the number of STRs. And that's where we end up with the seven point okay. whatever it is. Which sounds mm -hmm. better. <laughs> So, okay. It's well, still higher than. Yeah. 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 That's a, I, but I, I think that's a good point to make is just that because, you know, when we're kind of trying to land on something from, from the policy standpoint of like, well, where's that threshold? It was, that's kind of what we're, that's what we're basing it on was that look at, well, what's, you know, what, what is that uh, maximum occupancy or yeah. Average permitted occupancy. Limit. So. Uh, so that was that section. Um, again, not not big changes. It was mostly for formatting. Um, and and as you read through the report, we flip again. We flip these sections. So the proximity tool section was up front, and then it kind of goes into the SDR occupancy section. Um, and so this is the regulation limits and additional considerations for SDR occupancy. Um, it is one that we have been kind of kicking around for a while, but um, again, at the strong encouragement of council, we, we kind of took a deep dive in it. Um, and uh, I, again, I don't think we changed a whole lot um, yeah. in here. Out of all the sections, this one kind of felt like it was... Um, Does anyone have any questions on the committee about this, this these the next two pages? No? Okay. So, and then we're here. Your jurisdictions, your policy review. Again, so this is pretty much the same section you saw, just kind of changed some of the words, right? Pure jurisdictions, just because there's cities and counties in here. I think we call them. Right. It's still a county and the city of Seaside. Yeah. And so it's, and it, do we have Palm Springs in there last time? We might yep. have. Okay. Yeah. So, so we added, um, or we re kind of re. re Formatted the content there, but the same content, same takeaways. Um, you know, we have our need, getting into the policy context and recommendations, we have a need. Um, we have our objectives here. Again, thinking back to that chart at the beginning or the graphic at the beginning, right? We're funneling down to this as kind of like the next door or, um, you know, adjacent home. Um, 
And so we're, we're hoping to address, you know, yeah. um, reduction of the air related vehicle traffic. I mean, these are all, yeah, these aren't new, but kind of what this, this policy is anchored on. And, uh, and that's, I think that's the end. Oh, we got the last page there. Policy recommendations. So I think it, some of the language changes reflect our discussions last month that we wanted to come up with um, recommendations that were clear for people to read, but also enforceable and easy to understand. So we changed, you know, just the children and adult number from baby, you know. So I'm hoping when everybody read the policy recommendations, those seemed pretty clear. Or were there any? No. Good. No, that is the the one of the ordinances. One of the changes to the ordinance was the date of the renewal at the last council right. meeting. Is it right. is it the end of July, or is it the beginning of mm, August? You I mean, can't remember what it was changed. I, right now. No, no, well, we changed, we changed, it, changed it. it. Yeah, I know. It wasn't. It was the end of July before, so it's probably August. I, I don't remember. We need I, to just double check and make it. Yeah. Make it. I think. I think Chris said, I guess yeah. said yeah. it was the end of. They changed it in August. It yeah. just changed by. Yeah. It was like July, August. It's yeah. a little terrible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to make sure that that is the same as the new one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it's an unknown or we've no, it's not an unknown. They brought it up. It's a hole or something. We just made need to make it the same before they changed it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, like I said, as I know, I still spend time. No. One, <laughs> one, one, one comment, <laughs> and I brought this up before. Um, we talk in this document about bedrooms and we you get to the last page and then it talks about bedrooms slash sleeping areas. Okay. And I'm wondering if we're sending a next signal that we shouldn't refer to bedrooms slash sleeping areas throughout the document. Okay. And that's, that's a code thing, right? I mean, is it, what is the ordinance? Say? What is it says sleeping areas? I believe, yeah. yeah. But I thought the ordinance was changed, so it had to be. It, oh, because there's a definition of bedrooms in the ordinance too, though. It should it should say exactly what the ordinance what the, yeah. says. So yeah. I'll go back and check again. Okay. okay. Consistent. The only thing I'm thinking about is somebody's going to say, "Aha! I have." Four bedrooms, but I've got this little area over here. But it has to be you. Area. You define sleeping areas in your in your ninety five four in your planning zoning ordinance, and that's what it. That's what the no, I, SDR ordinance refers to. So I will look at the planning ordinance ninety five four. I'm wondering if Danielle's and, had any creative thinkers on her oh. end who have decided you know where. I I feel like with. The most recent updates to the ordinances that that there's really not a way that you can get creative. It's pretty self-explanatory on what a sleeping area and it's part of the ordinance. Is. It's part of the it's ordinance. part of the inspection. Correct. And at the inspection, they say correct. You may have. I almost want to say it's the bedrooms because I feel like the plus two, the plus four, whatever they decide on, but the plus four currently now is is they they really don't care that there's a sleeping area because it's not defined as a bedroom. And and so it's more so of if you're using that for sleeping, it's got to have there is a there is a definition and there the is. inspectors use that definition. I just don't remember what exactly how it is. Yeah, I wish I could see that. The other, the other thing is that um, do we feel that we're clear with regards to when we say plus two or plus four? Oh, here it is. That that means children, with the exception of those under two. I think it says. That. I think it says. I think it does. It does that. Infants up to age two are excluded. But, it's, but it only, it, as far as I know, it only says it once. Here. At the end, I hear what you're saying. Well, it doesn't it say it early too. Well, it's it because it talks about the city not being. I mean the 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 agencies not being able to track children mm -hmm. and therefore mm -hmm. under the age of two i think it does but that's a good point to check again sure well yeah 
The only thing I'm trying to do is to make this as bulletproof as possible yeah. because yeah. people are going to come down here and they're going to stretch the rules yes. until they break. Yes. And so we better say what we mean and mean what we say. Right. Okay. The, 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 <laughs> well, the definition again. the definition in 10.3 calls it a sleeping room and it says so sleeping room not so sleeping area, area. Okay. Okay. okay so that needs to change and the definition is a fully enclosed habitable space with a heat source and emergency mm -hmm. egress or rescue opening meeting the minimum standards of the current Oregon Residential Specialty Code. Um, and that's so it's the it's the Oregon Residential Specialty Code which spells out what is a sleeping room. Okay. Okay. And so that's room like, to me sounds better than areas. Yeah. 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 Areas yeah. is mm -hmm. mushy. Yeah. 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 Let's change is, that. Okay. I, I wrote that down. So that will match the language in 10 Okay. Perfect. Um, any other comments or can we did, um, I had one other did you want to include that the city of Bend actually has a proximity policy as well that they it's 500 feet of separation between STRs um yeah I think we should what do you think? yeah we can include that I mean just for some context but yeah we're not we're not out there by ourselves yeah okay okay Julie, can you send um, Michael or I like the verbiage on that? Sure. I think. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, Patrick has his hand raised. Patrick? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to say um, a lot of cities use the, the halo for with various radiuses from 100 to 500. So. I mean, the catch uh, you know if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna use bend um somebody might ask why did you use that versus all the others you know maybe it's more of a um this is up to you all but maybe it's more of an attachment that could list them all um it's like it's like picking facts to support your argument rather than sharing all facts but that's that's all up to you and i think we did it in um the first proposal when we talked about proximity we talked about some of the other cities and we did exactly what Patrick said. You had that chart of. Yeah, there's um, all kinds of places on the coast that use it. In fact, I think that's did, more, we, that's as prevalent as uh, caps. Didn't we put it in the first document? I don't remember that. Well, I think so. Well. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost we, positive we, we did. Yeah. The, um, and I think that was why I didn't include it here because we weren't talking. Hmm. We weren't doing those. Right, I know. We were doing it for, for occupancy, not, not proximity. proximity. But maybe Patrick's right. If it's something we have access to and we can get to. Um, for the packet. For, for the packet. Or the packet. Um, yeah, it is tough to put um, But it's a good point. Yeah, I think it's uh, important to note that other areas are doing this because we don't make note of that anywhere else in the document. We make note of it in the first document. This is only an addendum. So oh, it is, we're positive it's in the first document. I'm positive, yeah. Okay. Patrick has his hand raised again. Patrick. Patrick? Just a Patrick. second point. Yeah, just a second point. Something to think about for you guys is this isn't used for spacing in most communities. Like 90% of communities use this to get rid of short-term rentals. So just, you know, just a just uh, just potentially think about taking caution about using those as examples if you're trying to kind of create a sustainable um, short-term rental you know strategy in Manzanita because you're if you're pointing to other communities you're pointing ones that use these halos to get rid of short-term rentals that's what they're commonly used for right well I think that goes back to our discussion of we wanted to be proactive in, in implementing this before it became the kind of thing that other cities are using in management. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to process that information. I think it's important to note that we're being more proactive than reactive. 
Mm -hmm. So it's maybe better to do this before we have a Which is always better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, thank you though, Patrick. Anything else? No, that's, I mean, that's good. Uh, thanks everyone for, oh, Mark, yeah, Cody. Oh, oh, Cody's got it. Oh, I can't see that. <laughs> I can't see that part. Thank you, Mark. I was looking for the yellow hand. This is a different color. I thought that was a beauty thing. Cody, you're Cody? Not Do I have my hand up somehow? Yeah, yeah. Are we just waving at us? <laughs> yeah. I guess I was just waving. Sorry, I, I must have clicked something on accident. Is it your cursor? That's an it's the cursor. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know this is awesome. Like it would be yellow. Then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little. I was like, I was looking oh. for the yellow hand. Right? <laughs> We're putting you on the spot, Cody. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't Do you have anything to add? You don't have to uh, make people come. Do we want to hear his conclusions? Uh, what is it? Cody's? Yeah. I thought yes. he In my mind. I don't know. Yeah. Does he know? Cody? Are you in a position to share your conclusions? So not the not from the very beginning, but the very so here's what I think. Um, you can also you can... Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm I'm trying to uh, stay away from here's what I think. Um, I'm just compiling all the actual data we have. Um, okay. Right, all the data that you acquired from the survey, from um, peer jurisdictions, um, from management companies, and most of that's in the background. Um, but then for the budget, right, I, I reached out to Nina and... Um, it got all the revenue from predominantly STR tax, um, but also from STR fees, um, and then made sure I plugged in all the relevant tables that you have. Um, really, the only like new stuff that I added pertained to, let me see, a workload impact, um, as well as what the citywide regulation um, is really prioritizing. So maybe I'll, if I could just run those two things by you. That'd be great. So for the workload impact, and it doesn't have to be worded this way, but this is just the way I worded it. Um, I talked about the digital city map. And I remember Joe, you saying, um, probably not a 10 minute update, but roughly a 30 ish minute update or just a brief update, um, probably once a month. Um, but then regarding, um, actual implementation of one of those three citywide, um, regulating policies, um, I figured this would roughly be the case. So for the percentage based growth, the STR committee has assessed a greater workload impact for this option year over year to, calculate the percentage amount and then restrict growth when 17.5% is reached, as is the case currently. For the fixed number ceiling, um, similar to the above reasoning, though no calculation would be necessary, restricting growth when the ceiling is reached would put the city in a similar position as it's currently in. And then for incremental growth, the STR committee assessed the least amount of workload impact for this policy option as the city controls the growth each year instead of housing development. And growth is also foreseeable and consistent year over year with no need for freezes and no calculations are necessary. Um, that seemed intuitive to me, um, but if you have any thoughts, I can definitely add those. I thought those are good. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think so Cody, did you, did you do any uh, impact on staff regarding uh, proximity and using the proximity tool? Um, no, my, minus that little update, um, just that 30 minute update for the actual map. Okay. Um, that was about it, but I can, I can include anything there. I, um, I didn't want to guess on this. Like I, I'm really just pulling in your data. Um, and I didn't know what else to, to add for the workload impact. Okay. I, so this is the proximity, using the proximity tool, if we go in that direction, is a big deal. 
And I'm not sure whether whether we want Cody to, to deal with that, whether we want to not deal with it until we determine whether we're going to use proximity, but it's a big deal. And uh, we need to decide whether we want to include that, or Cody, Cody and me need to decide whether we want to include that. I think the committee, if I can speak for most of the committee, feels that if we don't include proximity, we're ignoring the results of the survey. Well, yeah, I think I agree yeah, with that. I agree with that. So yeah. that means then, because uh, it's going to be, a, a at least initially, a significant workload for staff. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe Joe and Cheryl and Cody could work together in terms of what that would mean. I, I hate to put that only on Cody because mm -hmm. he hasn't been part of these discussions. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I I understand what you're saying, but I'm not sure that we should be doing it. I think it's something that Chris and Cody and Scott, Scott mm -hmm. and maybe one of us should have a discussion on, but it should be more led by those three. Then we should say that. Than by us. Yeah. 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 But, but at the time is unknown. We we think it, but we feel having used it ourselves. Yeah, or something along it's those pretty lines. simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you've used it. Mm -hmm. Max uses it now. Yeah. Um. So I think we've shown by usage it's not that hard. But you're right. Maybe we should say that. Well, and, right. and the other thing in that comment is time frame. Um. I think we. I think it would be helpful to give. Layla and staff adequate time to figure out. I mean, just the questions you brought up. I mean, those those are. Real I just questions. don't want the city to have liability. It because that right. really puts them in the liability. Right, and yeah. and we're going to face that. So yeah. it's not a okay. Let's. It's the system itself is pretty easy. Yes, but it's the surrounding issues, the logistics of it, of yeah. the logistics that they need to think through, and it's going to take some time. So. And that may also involve the city attorney at some oh, point to will. just yeah it just to make will. sure that that all the boxes are checked no it definitely yeah will. yeah but i'm going to go back a little bit i i agree with all of this but i really feel like when we approach this as a committee it was not pick or choose which one you know going back to the right. city like half the proximity density tool or the, the maximum occupancy we were presented it as a full package right. that they work together um, and it was super clear in the survey that people wanted a density and proximity tool. Mm -hmm. So if we adjust the time frame, my inclination is to say that all the new SG policy, SGR policy from the citywide cap, whatever that is, all three of those go into place at the same time. Because exactly. to pick and choose them, well, it's trying to implement yeah. different things at different times becomes very confusing. Right. Okay. I agree with you. And that's that's not that's from. I mean, I think Cody, in in terms of staff requirement, that's that needs to come from Cody. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I mean, that came up at our July presentation, and I think it it's in our original document that that. You this gotta do it. Do it as a package. Is that? Yeah, I don't think we were comfortable with any of these just being a standard. Then that should be part of our recommendation. Okay. Yes. And then I Cody agree. should take it in terms of a uh, staff impact, unknown, but may take some time. And I don't know how you want to put that, Cody. But but it's not going to be quick. You know, we're going to implement it tomorrow. So can I ask um, one? question so um beyond the actual like digital city map update we'll say that 30 minutes each month it's just using the actual tool when you get an str application um uh, so, so i'm thinking i would just need annual um numbers for str applicants and then i've never used the tool before so i don't know like do you have a rough time frame of how long it takes to just input an address of the applicant and then like so, use the 100 foot radii tool 
it's, second. It's quite... That's why I'm understanding. I don't think it's going to be a huge transition to implement this tool once we we do it. If, particularly if we've got the monthly updates in the in your presentation. It, it's going to be a lot more complicated. Than, it's not just the tool. It's okay. the rules around yep. the tool. And I suggest that Joe and Cheryl and Cody do it. Should take okay what that is and how to do it okay which is what you did with us to begin no. with and it's it the the tool itself is a piece of cake that's it okay. go in real quickly it's not going to be time consuming to update what's time consuming are getting it set understanding what the the rules around it are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that the city policy and once that's done it's it's nothing Really. So my question with with all of this, like I think, um, and maybe this is a silly question, so I apologize ahead of time if it's a silly question, but I'm trying to process this all. So the tool in my head can be if this if the if the council agrees on all of this and, it, and it's great and we move forward, implementing that tool will be pretty easy to do. That logistically, I think that would be okay, but. It, but changing everything to the plus two instead of the plus four and those sides of things, that's, is that something for council to figure out how that's going to be or when that's going to be implemented? Does that happen on renewal? Does that happen immediately? Does that happen? Is that for us to figure out or is that more of a council city situation? I think we said on license renewal, right? Yeah, but I mean, because so, I'm thinking of this from Scott. The highest percentage of homes aren't at that two plus four anyway. They're right. at two plus two, and I don't remember offhand what the like seventy. To 80%. It's over seventy. Yeah. It's about eighty percent of homes are not at the max current cap. They're yeah. at the suggest what we're suggesting. Right. So, um, I don't think. I mean, that's one thing we can assist council if they want to go through those numbers. But when we did that, we looked at that. The transition to that is not a big deal. For yeah, them. I don't think you're going to have a ton of feedback coming on. Oh my God, what changed? It yeah, would be simply a notification. Yeah, but it seems a reasonable if that it would be on license renewal. Okay, I, mean, I, I whatever, that's what I would agree. I mean, with. I think that's yeah. right. All of this is a transition. So you set the policy, but we have these things in place, and then we, we our intention is to put this in place with ease and clarity, right. not. No, do right. it tonight. I mean, we need right. to, so it's done right, and so people understand these changes are coming. And so would it be three year, three year? No, no. I think that's up to staff. Okay, or would it be the yearly? We have suggested the annual license renewal, which is yearly. That's not the inspection. That's the license. so. What is the scenario of this? If council votes on this and it all goes through, what month does that happen? That that here's my question. If it renews that, in July, you're only giving people a very I, short. No, it's time. not going to happen in July. I okay, think it will be a staff decision, and I okay. suspect if anything, it'll be a year from July. Okay. So just as long as there's that time and length, or in September, which is the next renewal. Oh, in September, because right. everybody books for summer. Hmm. Either the summer prior right. or right after spring And break. we've had this discussion and we understand that. And and again, I think the adoption, this is part of the education piece. Okay, here's the right. new policy. This, it, it can be um, it, it's a like, roll-in kind of, you know. Which I would deal. suggest. But yeah. I think, I think what our suggestion is, all three of those elements are rolled in. Okay. Does and that it, make sense? I don't, and I think that's the staff and the city's right. I, yeah, it really is. There. I, it's not, not that's, ours. I, we, right. can, okay. we can suggest, sure, but yes. it's it's going to be staff's decision. And I think that's why it's so important that Cody really have a sense of what it looks like because yeah, um, Layla's going to be looking to him mm -hmm. for those suggestions. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, I'll put something that is maybe not real popular um, out there is that. I, for one, I would agree that this is best implemented as a package because when you go back to that, that funnel diagram, if you miss any one of those, you're not addressing it at the associated, like, you know, the next door neighbor mm -hmm. level or the street or neighborhood mm -hmm. level. But standalone, they can, they can serve that function, but you're not addressing the package, which is comprehensive. Right. Yeah. And so, <laughs> 
But if you were to have, like, I could envision something where it was phased, I would say at a minimum. So when you take a step back and say, well, what has to happen by, is it April? Uh, the yeah. three-year mark, right? Uh, the freeze, when the freeze, you know. Um, so you, you have a growth control policy in place. And that is probably, I hate to characterize it as the easiest thing, but in my mind, that's probably it is. it's okay. within reach and yeah. it makes sense and it, you know it's it's there uh, from an implementation side to any one of those options you could, you know you can make happen um, it's not more I agree with you I mean I don't think I think if the council and I would I would say if the council says we are going to adopt these three things this growth control this proximity this occupancy growth control is going to take effect in April. I think we could then say proximity will take effect in the following January. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, ideally it I'll be April, but if it can't be that way, as long as the council so let me makes ask. clear these three things are going to happen, the date. It, well, but it, in vary. a sense, though, if you, if you do that, say, oh, a year from now, we're going to have a proximity density standard, then will that encourage people to get homes and, and, Plus, I mean, I think we're setting it up so that proximity tool becomes uh, the punishment. You know, we we put this forth, uh, all these discussions as this meets the response from the community. So I would hesitate to, hmm. it's not our role, it's not our decision what the role that is, but I think you're setting it up for conflict and failure and we had input from neighbors. We sat at the, thing this summer or uh, last spring. What are we saying to that neighbor if we say we didn't address it, we didn't address we were sort of kind of gonna address your concern a year from now, where meanwhile we know homes are, her home, her block is one of those blocks that's saturated. So, so really good point. But two things. First of all, it's not our decision. Oh exactly. It's the city's decision. Yeah. We can say it is our recommendation that you implement the full package for these reasons. Mm -hmm. But that's it. Exactly. After yeah. that, it's you know the city will decide the best way to implement or what what they can logistically handle and implement in an effective way. But the proximity tool isn't really going to affect those high density areas right away because it's based on sale. You're not revoking people's licenses. No. So, so, yeah. so it's, I kind of agree with Cheryl on the fact that if we did implement everything together, it's not like it's going to be a huge, you know, oh my gosh, we're going to lose our licenses. You know, yeah, it, exactly. it has nothing to do with that. It's more so based on it's proactive. Correct. So I don't see why it can't all be implemented at one time, but again, it's, it's up to the staff. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I think we could have this discussion for the next yeah. hour because I yeah. think we can see it. But I think our job is to to clearly investigate and the, articulate and articulate what, you, what we think should what yeah. we're recommending. Work with Cody on making sure we have a uh, an understanding of what it would take to implement the proximity tool for city. Right. Or at least our suggestions, like this is what it's going to need, identify the need. And so perhaps when we, the city decides, they'll keep those things in mind. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, maybe it's not going to be this much work. Or maybe, oh, yeah, we're going to do this work. But they can have those internal conversations to right. figure it out. Right. Well, it might be something to where... I don't know. We keep saying Cody, you're there, Cody. So we'll just yeah. <laughs> scapegoat. So, but this idea, like a lot of the questions that are we're being talked about right now. One, um, you know, I will get the answer down the road. But for the sake of the policy report on, or our, you know, recommendations, I'm, you know, I think it's important to note that there's a workload associated with it. Absolutely. But at, for, at our first um, exploration of the tool, it is not um, does not appear to be a burden, but it's not nothing. I think. I think the statement that I want to make, though, is that it's um, in implementation of the tool as it is right now, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. And being somebody who's worked with GIS before and knows that maintaining data sets is where, like, the effort mm -hmm. can be. I mean, like, if you have to get in there, I mean, say if Esri stops having 
you know, this as an off the shelf tool, then, you know, are we going to have to pay a GIS? You right. know, yeah. It's yeah. to do code to, right. to do it up a one off. I mean, but, but we have the tool now. It works. Uh, maintaining the data set as long as there's a set of, uh, you know, that's where the, the work might be and making sure that that data, that tabular data set syncs up with the spatial data set is the only time sync that I can see at this point. But I, I think that the opportunity, going back to what I was going to say about Cody, is like down the road, and I guess this is maybe outside we're talking about here, but he could write like a program, uh, you know, assessment of what it would be to implement it. What are the data maintenance needs and that kind of stuff? He doesn't have to know that information, but I mean, I'm sure you could track that down, uh, reaching out to. It's also important to note that the proximity tool is not going to be used if whatever cap this, that is chosen were at it. Right? right. Well, right. it will be if you're trying to purchase a house. No, that would no, be the only. No, no, what she's saying is, if we are at maximum capacity on the citywide cap, okay, there's no reason to take the second step of looking at proximity in in a particular neighborhood because they can't get a license. We're at the cap. Okay. okay. But again, if it, I mean, I think that's the first uh, window is if you apply, if I want my pre inspection and I know there's a cap, then I know that. Right. I know this proximity tool is coming, which can be done by counting at houses. So I mean, I right. think, I mean, we can get this tool, or and again, we're we're going into areas that I think we can't control. Well, Maybe I, we're making up making it harder. And that, that cap does change real often, frequently. But, but it will not. No, I mean, like the 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 whether there's a license available or not available, that fluctuates way more than you think it does. Um, you know, there'll be all of a sudden there's no licenses available, and two weeks later there's three. So which it, is the it does same change with proximity. It won't change as much, but right. it will change the same way. Was, okay. There might have been five houses in this SDRs in this mm -hmm. catchment area, and now there's three. Three. There's right. two houses sold or whatever. Sold or yeah. decided not to be SDRs. So okay. Okay. Tony. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I have one more thought? Please? Well, I think I, Cody, what's the best way for us, your suggestion for us to work through getting some uh language around implementation of the proximity tool is that for something for us to work with you on or for you to work with other city folks on can can you help us with that i think just regarding that tool just a very high level workload impact um and so whoever would know that best and again i i would assume that that's um someone on this committee but if it's a staff member and if it's scott or chris i can reach out to them. Again, I um, I don't have nearly as much exposure to all this as you all. Um, and so either point me in the right direction um, or I can just go in blind and, and email people. I do that too. I would email, I, Scott should be the contact. He's Chris's boss. So I would say Scott, because he knows the overall program the best but as far as what know, they have to implement. He doesn't know this he program. Knows this, he knows no. this tool as well. He's, sa he's savvy. Well, I mean, why don't why don't after the meeting, Cody? Uh, we'll just walk you through. We'll just walk you through this program, and then maybe you'll have a better sense of of things. Yep. Does that work? Yep. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Patrick, it's time. Yeah. yeah I, I, I just have to say one more thing, and that is, there's a big difference in using the tool. Mm -hmm. the tool's easy. Mm -hmm. Beyond mm -hmm. a big deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, any staff. We've got the staff. They can learn it. Sure. And sure. Take care of the of the website tool. It is the policy in terms of how you implement it that's going to take time. And it's going to need a legal review. I mean, the what the city doesn't want to get in to is a sample of what Danielle suggested. You know, you you think you're buying a house and you're going to have a short term rental. come to find out somebody buys it in the proximity, closes it off. There's got to be a lot of thoughts about what those There's a lot are. of logistics in the back. There's a lot of yeah. logistics. So it's it's more than just the tool. The tool is a piece of cake. It's, the, it's a great tool. It, it's a terrific tool. It's the policy behind that tool that is really going to be complicated and something the city, Scott, Chris, mm -hmm. Cody have to really think through. So you mean the policy of a hundred foot catchment area? The policy of how you implement that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still not clear on what you mean. I'm not clear on that. So either. so uh you know, I the the I go back to the example that uh that Danielle was talking about. 
you know, somebody comes to buy a house, they get a they get a pre-inspection. They if there's plenty, there's room, there's one more room for that mm -hmm. uh, particular house. So they're cool. In between the time they purchase the house, somebody else comes in in that neighborhood. And why is that different from the growth cap? Well, it's not different, but it's just different. Well, it's policy. different. Yeah, I mean, it's different because different there's... in terms of implementation, how is it any different? I think it's. I think it is more complex. I think they I have think to think so. through a hundred. What what Layla will scream about is any potential liability right. of somebody who mm -hmm. thinks they have the. The, the, they've got the pre-inspection. They've it, passed it. Yeah, but I'm going to push back because you know the policy is a hundred foot radius, so you can literally go to that house and look a hundred feet. Well, right, but it was available at the time in, in the interim. I mean, I, there I, it's the going to happen. The city going to happen. The city has to assume that's going to happen. You have to think the worst case scenario. So this goes back that, yeah. to a sixty day holding place for you, or something like that. So, yeah, or like, no pre inspections, we, or, uh, yeah, or exactly. something. But it, yeah, that's what they have to okay. determine. Okay. Okay. Thank support. you for clarifying. I'm yeah. just thinking it was the proximity. I'm like, it's a hundred feet. No, I mean, it's, it's not. Hard. It's not hard. I think the but reason. It, Again, isn't that something we can turn over to city staff to yes. look at? Because that scenario you described happens. It is absolutely the city's job. Yes. To do yeah. that. Okay. But what it affects is the time frame of implementation. Okay. And if you say we want the whole package to go in at once, I want you to realize that you're slowing it down. Right. You're slowing the other stuff down. You're, you're slowing I agree with that. Which, yeah. which is okay. It's just you need to process that that's what you're doing. Yeah. So we can have a we can have a policy recommendation and a recommendation that says any any implementation should it require phasing uh, should consider. You know. There, I mean. You could, yeah. yeah. I think like really quick. I just want to be clear. I really do not think. This committee's recommendations should be to get rid of pre-inspections, and I'll tell you the reason oh, they put pre-inspections in place. No, is... that's not our recommendation. Okay, good. That's yeah, because the that's... city. I think she threw that out there. Is once again that falls into the city's, the city's decision. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The recommendations not, not are in the right. report. So yeah, we're perfect. Not... <laughs> um, who, who guarantees that a buyer that comes into this community is going to get the opportunity to have a short-term rental? Absolutely. Okay. No, there isn't a there guarantee. Is no, there's no guarantee. Right. So we're taking on responsibility here that doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, this, this would be what the attorneys... Buyers, this, if Go a over. buyer chooses to come in and purchase a piece of property, that's one thing. Right. If a buyer comes in here and decides he's going to purchase a piece, piece of property and he's going to share that with others as a short-term rental, whatever, mm -hmm. then that onus passes to him. Right. And so I, I, so I, right I, I feel now, like we're bending over backwards for buyers. And I, right. I, I don't think I, we no, have to I do don't that. think so. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so at all. And I think what this is, what, what we're discussing is really not our job. Right. Correct. It's really yeah. a staff right. job. Right. And we're we're doing all of these concerns, but it's going to fall in Cody's lap in uh, Scott's and Chris's lap. And our own, yeah. I mean, the yeah. city well, well, what we need, right. what we right. need to understand right. in terms of our recommendation is: is it important, as Cheryl has suggested, that we need to do the whole thing at once, right. which has implications in terms of timing, <clears throat> or do we want to stage it, or, or suggest staging it as uh, what's the easiest thing to do? So I'm I'm fairly certain that once we decide what that cap is going to be, right. That's pretty. That's the first step. Yeah, that's and, great. Yeah. As Patrick points out, that's a lot step. of cities do this. Oh, they a lot. do proximity. They do yeah. a halo. Yeah. So we yeah. know that it's not yeah. something that's going to lend the right. city right. in court. It's not a land use thing. It's yeah. it's an ordinance in the same way that I think there just needs to be written. Is. It needs to be written. It, that's, yeah, that's, the legal terms need to be in place yeah. before we yeah. implement yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But again, I don't think it's our responsibility to guarantee. I mean, I think you're, I want to. I, I think we need to figure out how to wrap this up because we're going to go around and circle yeah. on what it's, and we all get it. Um. So, is there any new information? Or are we comfortable with what we've decided to do, which is we're going to work with Cody, show him the tool, and get some guidance from him on how it should be best uh, incorporated into our 
presentation on the 8th mm -hmm. for what information should be made. And 13th, Julie Scott. 13th, sorry. And yeah. then Julie has your hand up. But, and then, of course, with that, we can make some uh, suggestions or recommendations about implementation and timelines. But broadly, because I think, I think the, the providing some clarity around what the issues, big picture issue might be, would inform the city to have those conversations among staff, not not us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I think Cody having listened to this conversation. Yeah, we'll doing absolutely. Yeah. Julie. Oh, I, I'm just backing up to try to say that I agreed with Michael that I think that we wouldn't want to position it that we discourage them from not taking the entire package recommendation and in uh, instead of just saying they're going to go with growth control option starting in April. I just personally, it's my opinion, I would hate to see it just go backwards when the freeze ends. And instead of taking a forward step when the freeze ends. If it ends. That's a good point. <laughs> that's the other option. They could extend it, yeah. Could extend it. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. if it ends. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, that's another thing out of our show. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I think you, that's well said, and maybe we can capture that, that the proximity and density tool is a forward-thinking measure as a result of the livability survey and what the community members yeah. wanted. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can make an edit to the report. I guess that's the thing I just wanted to kind of maybe put a pin in. Everything that I've heard today tells me that I should probably make a sentence or two in the introductory about um, implementing it as a package. But we understand that it uh, phase a phase approach may be needed to accommodate that. I would not time. use a phase. I would use a rolling something. Sounds like we'll, 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 we'll work on that. So yeah. 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 Time, bring it but back again, that report. restates what we said in July. That it's, yeah. Okay. Room. Oh, yeah, I got the, yeah, rooms. I got the, the language and uh, the length sleeping room yeah. and um, confirm the new renewal date. Okay. And Julie said it too. Okay. Julie, you have your hand again? Or no. Oh, or no. I'm just saying hi. <laughs> say hi. Um, okay. Patrick's been real patient. Patrick has been super patient. And at our last meeting, um, Linda uh, uh, talked to Patrick's a member now, a member of the comp committee. He was a member of the SDR committee, and that Envision survey is online. Like I said, a hundred times, everybody should take it on their own. And um, Patrick wanted to talk to us today about that survey, and I would, I'm assuming Patrick, as from our conversation, and how that um, folds into the STR committee's work. Did I get it? You got it. And uh, actually, um, I, I would imagine this could be wrapped up in about five minutes, but I just kind of wanted to introduce myself uh, to the committee. Um, I'm one of seven members on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. Um, and we saw a lot of you at the first community, first of four community meetings on October 28th. Um, it's a process that is going to go for about 12 or 18 months, um, just um, I'll be acting uh, over that time uh, as a resource to you all uh, for questions that you might have or input that you might want to share. Uh, hopefully, you know, um, information can go uh, both ways. And um, <clears throat> just kind of as a big, some big picture uh, items. Um, so far, um, uh, you know, there are, gosh, I don't know, 15-ish uh, goals that they're going to be talking about. And so the first ones that were talked about, they're, they're splitting them into four different groups, which align with basically the four upcoming quarters. So the first uh, the first group is fall, and that's housing and natural resources. That's what was talked about at the community meeting. The ones upcoming uh, are going to come in the spring, summer, and fall. In the spring, we're going to be talking about land use, urbanization, um, public services, uh, conservation. In the summer, we're going to be talking about recreational needs, economic development. In the fall, we're going to be talking about, uh, gosh, uh, air, water, land quality, shorelines, beaches, natural hazards, dunes, etc. So you know it's comprehensive, right? So uh, with respect to you all, um, what I what I hope to do is, as things come up that relate to short term rentals, or as those kind of come up um, directly, or, or as you know, just kind of. Um, kind of offshoots of a conversation, I'll, I'll try to share those with you. 
uh, if you guys have any um, thoughts, feel free to share them with uh, with me and I'll put them forth. So far, the only thing that's really come up in this has been the, um, the state has uh, given us, um, you know, a, a bill on middle housing and we have a directive to change our our building codes to, and, and you guys were talking about this in, in the opening of your meeting. So um, a lot of folks are aware of this, but we're, you know, the, the building codes are changing to allow for, you know, um, more housing, you know, in our R2, our former, our, our soon to be former R2, R3 areas, which, you know, could only build a house in the past. Now we'll be able to build duplexes, triplexes, quads, uh, different things. And um, so, the one thing that's kind of come up just uh, without getting into, you know, without just we're still in the idea mode is just making sure that as we build housing for our community and uh, potentially as we build affordable housing for our community to meet those needs, um, the idea is that there will probably be a process in place to ensure that those um, types of housing would not be short term rentals. Now, that's that's just something that's come up. Um, no one's made any decisions. No one's really had a, a dialogue or discussion about it, but it's something that's on, we're in the community outreach phase. And so that's something that's definitely on people's minds. So um, we don't want to build 500 new houses and then have them all become second houses and short-term rentals if the goal is to provide housing for our community in general or affordable, or affordable housing or workforce housing specifically. So um, just wanted to kind of reach out. Joe, Joe has a question, Patrick. Patrick, would that include would you when the when the suggestion is not to have them eligible to be short-term rentals, does that include duplexes, triplexes, and quads, or just multi or, or large units? You know, right? We're not even at that phase yet. It's just it was kind of like a comment that kind of has come up a couple times. So no one's really dug into it uh, uh, that deep. So, um, you know, I think those are great points. And I think those are things that are going to be, that are going to come up. If we have a uh, an R2 zone and somebody decides to build a um, a duplex there and the intent is to increase housing, uh, and yet one of those is a short-term rental and the other one is the owner's spot, what's, is that any different than the original short-term rental? Um, I don't, I don't have it as, I don't have a, um, I'm not on either side of that argument, but I think that's something that's worth definitely talking about. And, and those okay. are going to be about what our community, what we want our community to be in the next 20-ish years. Patrick, I have a question about the change in the building codes in the R2, R3, and R4. Is that change of structure is going to be based on the square footage of the lot? I mean, because now in Manzanita, you can build a duplex in, in the R2 and R3 probably in R4, but um, what? how would that change impact what our current status is now? Or is there a change for us in the community? Well, okay, so let's, let's just take a step back. Nothing is being changed yet. Nothing is being, um, no ideas are set in stone at this point. We are really in the community outreach phase in, in two ways. One, um, we're trying to get the we're trying to get the community to know that you can go onto the website and you can fill out the survey. The survey is very broad. It's like, what do you like? What do you dislike? Right? And um, all that information is going to be is being given to our our third party resource um, J three J J three uh, company, which is distilling all that information and putting it into all the categories that I listed out in the beginning and and trying to find you know, policies through that. Uh, also, one of their specialists is going through and comparing our building codes to other communities and giving us a kind of a building code audit that will probably drive changes. And I think that's going to be one of the first things. And because of uh, the Senate bill that um, requires middle housing, that's going to be one of the first things that comes out of this process. And so nothing's been set in stone. I haven't seen any decisions to be made even from the consultants, but my guess from what I've heard is the the map that we have that has R2, R3, R4, which was developed in the 90s or earlier, I think will materially change. 
I, I don't think it's, I don't think there, there may, it, there may be a world where we really don't have R2 and R and R3. Um, those are things I think we'll learn more about. Um, and th that's just conjecture on my part. Okay. So when you say the building codes are changing, you're talking about the zoning codes, zoning codes not necessarily the building within those zones. You're talking about a change in zoning codes. Correct. And, and, and the change in zoning codes determines what's built in those areas. Right. But currently, you can build a duplex in all of those zones. And I think you could build a triplex if you meet the square footage. Du duplex was a bad example, but triplexes you can really only do in R3, R, R, R3, I would imagine. I mean, four. special, special, yeah. I mean, so I mean, the, but the the um, how this all relates to you all. I mean, I think when we when you all first began this process, we had maps that were based on kind of these building code zones, these zones. I think you know those maps will still like, that. I think the when they going forward. I mean, and this is you know twelve to eighteen months away. Uh, uh, going forward, I think those those maps will look a lot different. But you know the the short-term rentals and where those are, are separate from those and will continue to kind of grow and flourish as your policies allow them to. Patrick, I have a quick question. Um, I'm not sure how to formulate this question, so I'll do my best. Um, right now, if you build within Tillamook County or within the city, there's some sort of kickback if you're building workforce housing or affordable housing of some, not affordable housing because that's subsidized, but uh, workforce housing. Is that a way that the policy can maybe be written around if you're getting that type of funding that those cannot be short-term rentals? Sure. I mean, like I said, like this is going to be really important. I mean, it's for you all, like, and, and Danielle, for you specifically, and, every, and I know other people on this committee have kind of ties to different folks who are involved in this process of building, creating, developing. I mean, the, your voices and those thoughts are going to be critical when we get to those stages of, of those types of things. Um, mm -hmm. The trickiest thing, uh, the thing that we have the least control over, we can we can change the laws and the codes that allow for, and this is something Joe was talking about at the beginning of your meeting. There's a difference between build, changing rules about where you can build and then finding the people who have the money to build, right? Mm -hmm. And so your point is about the incentives for affordable housing. So we do a lot of, at our bank, we do a lot of affordable housing lending, et cetera. Um, you know, those sometimes are contingent upon the, the states, uh, the counties, the different things. And, you know, that's uh, that's something we don't always control. And you can't, for, you can't force somebody to build affordable housing. It has to, it has to pencil out. And so it has to be affordable. For the for, it has to it has to break even for the builder as well. Middle income, that's what they're calling the other one. Middle income is what they're calling the other one. So they've got affordable housing to me means it's subsidized. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's that's how I've always Basically, thought. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. think that's it's more middle, isn't it? Well, middle it's, it's it there's there's two forms. You can have subsidized or you can have um you can have buildings that have rents that are below market uh, and then on the back side you know it's like tax uh, tax credits um, are the ways that they they make that money up and things like that but Joe I think another job of our committee with Patrick and the other with the rest of his group is to inform and remind them of things that will affect their decisions like we have one ordinance in place that already does that says mm -hmm. in Manzanita, you can only have one short-term rental license so that a person that has a quad and rents it out mm -hmm. could by current ordinance, only one of those could be a short-term rental. Yeah, A duplex, only one side can be a short-term rental. Yeah. So we already have one ordinance in place that helps protect us against people's, oh my God, we're going to have a quad and it's all going to be short-term rentals. The other part that we need to somehow 
make sure is out there is if we put in a proximity mm -hmm. policy, that will take care of some of those fears sure. that people have mm -hmm. by saying you mm -hmm. can only have five in a to total in a catchment area. So I think, again, our job is just to kind of remind them, you know, here's here's what we can do for you once mm -hmm. you make your once you once you're as you're considering what to do. Yeah, because I think what we're already doing is what you're saying, Joe, is what we're already doing is going to sort of put a kibosh to a lot of those worries yeah. already. Yeah. Yeah. So we and, kind of and so like your committee, I think, is providing a, a, the comprehensive plan committee a great service. Uh, and one of the reasons I'm calling in uh, and I'll be calling in each time is just to just make sure we're, I'm up to speed on every single thing that you guys are doing so that when they have questions, we have answers to them right away. And I think just more communication is is best. And it's interesting, Joe, that you bring up the concept of proximity and, and different things like that, because, you know, the one owner rule is, in, is, a, is a one license per owner rule is interesting because on Third Street, when you have those six houses that were just built, five of those six are short-term rentals. So, you know, it's it'll be nice to have, uh, I believe, uh, it'll be uh, nice to make go, go through this process and make sure that uh, all these all of these things that you're working on are going to make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, real, real quick, real quick question. Um, it came up. When do short term? Oh, so we're also doing a lot of outreach. Um, this is all about community outreach. This first stage. So these meetings are about community outreach. Um, our we've have a group of three of us who've gone up and down Lanita and gotten all the contact information for business owners in the area, and we're. We're working our way through that, and um, we've reached out to everybody on Lanita, and we're continuing to expand that from business owners. The next group will be short-term rental owners, and, the, and um, the question that came up was, when do short-term rental owners get to share their thoughts on your policy ideas? Because it, one of the things I heard you all say is, hey, we, you know, we're, we want to go through the research process and make sure we're doing all the right things. Um, that was... Um, that, that's a group that probably has a lot to, or has some thoughts on some of these things. I wasn't sure if you want to wait to hear from them when that goes to council, or if you hope to hear from them in advance. There's any member of the public. Yeah, I, th I think we're looking for that kind of input uh, at the workshop. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I think to no, me, a, a short-term rental owner, and some have attended. Um, well, some are on our committee. Too. Some are on our committee. Mm -hmm. Um, it, they're no different than, except they have a little bit of bigger, well, they don't have a bigger state because if you live in Manzanita, you have just as big a state. Mm -hmm. If Mark was interested, so he came to this meeting, um, you prior to being on the committee came to every meeting, mm -hmm. um, because you were interested as a, my, as a, every no, my gardener. Yeah. No, I didn't mean Danielle. No, my gardener is one of my owners. Yeah. My gardener. Oh comes to very many meetings, but I meant Patrick. Patrick. Oh, you're putting Katie out. I'm putting Katie out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll just move back. I was like, what? I know. I thought you were Daniel and I'm just here. Patrick, <laughs> Patrick, before he was on the, um, yes, yes, the committee came to every, every work group meeting mm -hmm. because you were interested. And I, I think that, that is where people, if they're interested, if they care, they got, it's just like it's also a disconnect. Come I mean, to the meeting. All of my owners don't live here. They have lives, they have jobs, they have other things they're doing. So like I let them know about the meetings and if they want to chime in, they chime in. If they um, you know, if they can't, they can't. So it it's yeah, I feel like there's so much opportunity to be involved. Is basically just just as an outsider's view, real quick. Um, I can listen, but I can't speak to what I'm called on. So like Throughout the meeting, you guys have asked questions like, what do you all think? What what is what does the committee think? What does the committee think? Um, so so to be honest, as an outsider, I don't know when we really get to 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 tell you what, what short-term rental owners think. So that's that's, that's the that's the that's the challenge, the disconnect from the outside. Were and SCAR owners included in the original community survey? Yeah. Julie has a question. Julie. What, were STR owners included in the original survey, community survey? Yeah, so they had input at that stage. Yeah, they had and they had input they had input during the pandemic uh, three years ago, and so but they haven't really. There's a lot of discussion about some of the changes that are being made, and 
there hasn't been as much ability to share input on those. Well, and it's, you know, so what, what, what they say sometimes is it's better to hear it uh, <laughs> before, before it goes to council rather than, than when it gets to council. Okay, hold that thought for a minute, Mark. Mark. Oh. I didn't. I didn't understand the parameters. If Patrick's correct, that I can't talk in this meeting. Well, and I would say Patrick's not correct. I was going to say so Patrick. I, yeah. it, my fault. <laughs> my fault, Patrick. But I did not make that clear because when I asked for people, if you had questions or specifically about what we were talking, I was talking to Mark and to you and to Michael and to Cody and to everyone in the room or on the screen. So. Um, I, you are welcome. If you would like to send me an email with your concerns, I will share them with the group now. If you have them that they, that you feel like you want to voice them to me and I will share them because it was probably a misunderstanding on my part because I was asking what you're, you're at the table and, and you're at the virtual table. Um, so I, I, I do think Joe is right and Danielle in that there now that we have in-person meetings there via Zoom and there being, you know, we would welcome that opinion on what the work of the day is. I think if you have overall questions about all the whole thing, that maybe is best at a city level at a time. I don't know when the council does that, but um can't people write in oh yeah they comments yeah prior and, to the yes. workshop. And the council reads all of yeah. them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I guess that would be one of your answers, Patrick. If you've got, if you know of short term rental owners who have not attended meetings but have questions or opinions, they can write they're, them. To yeah. They're, they're not attending these meetings, um, but they're hearing the news and they, they're, you know, they're, they, um, so just want to make sure uh, we, I give them the right information about where they should call in or or visit when they come and it sounds like work session is more about you guys and council not necessarily outside information like for wednesday is that fair well, to say? welcome to email anybody on the committee and i'm assuming you can email the city council oh, with whatever questions you have so i think that's one and all of this information will be in the packet Right. For the workshop. So there'll be some time to review the packet and then send comments to uh, city council. And I, I get to, to Patrick's point. When we started out, we really held comments to the end of the meeting. I think we've changed that, but I'm not sure we've all been really clear about that. So in I, council meetings? No, I, no in, this, in this meeting. Yeah. And because when, when we started out, you know, everybody that was on was given a chance to respond at the end of the meeting, mm -hmm. which is great. Mm -hmm. But I think I think we're more in an interactive phase, and I think we've changed that. And I think we need to be real clear about that maybe at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, I would say we're pretty a small group, even with the online. It'd be a lot harder to do that with, I mean, if this were... 50, 60 people, right. you'd never get through a meeting. You know, right. so waiting till the end would be good. But if yeah. it remains this small, that's a good point. That's a good that's point. A good but point. I also want to caveat that if you you have um, more than comments to make about the work at hand, right. then I think it would be best if you let us know ahead of time so we could schedule a way to include that. Because um, we kind of, at this point in our work, we're getting ready for the point, of, point. We are focused in yes. on getting these details for what I think is going to be our final presentation. <laughs> um, and I, and I guess I, I mean my two cents is just I think that uh, it, I love I love the ideas of implementing right away the uh, the cap city cap proximity implementing right away makes sense because you're basically just implementing a check at the city level for a new permit, they get to pick that, they get to do it. I think the, um, you know, the the thing that will be, uh, we'll get a lot of information, will be why, why reduce uh, occupancy by two. Um, and, you know, that'll be a, that'll be an interesting conversation. There's, well, a, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talk about that. <laughs> Wait, and I just want to chime in here, being the, the SDR yeah. on this committee. I've been real quiet to this and letting 
Patrick, thank you for sharing because you know we're, we're he was he was uh, Patrick and Jill were the other owners on our on our group, and so that voice is down to me now. But um, I do so I, I maybe want to say a couple things, um, and I, I also recognize we're kind of at our limit here in time. But um, I do so I have chatted with some some other owners, uh, and it sounds like you know Patrick, you've kind of got your finger on the pulse of maybe some others. Uh, that are SGR owners, and I would, I would, well, I know, even considering where we're at in the process, I would always welcome their their comments, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want to, you know, say, hey, that, you know, that train has left the station, you know. So let's, if there's still comments out there, um, particularly around occupancy, um, send them our way so we can make sure that if we haven't, you know, addressed it, you know, um, you know, is there still an opportunity for that? Um, I also want to say to, to real quick, um, you know, I really appreciate Danielle being here because I know you're not the SDR owner, but you're in contact with a lot right. of them. Mm -hmm. And when we a lot. yeah, <laughs> and when we present data that we're looking at, where it's like, okay, here's what's permitted, and then we do a spot check on what what's actually being the listings are actually saying. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that most of them are under that occupancy. Anyway, that's encouraging data to me. Yeah. Um, and I work very closely with Chris and Scott, very closely. I mean, weekly. So I'm very involved and help out a lot, you know, just as being a good steward of the business and a good steward of the industry. It's something I've always loved helping with. So, like, I do see the struggles of what the city faces on firsthand, mm -hmm. um, not just to work for my own homeowners and my rentals, but just as, as a citywide situation. So, so I appreciate being able to voice that yeah. for them anyway. And even yeah. hearing what they're out, you know, some of your clients that are out in the county are mm -hmm. listing less than what they could too. Right. You know, so, I mean, I think that's, that's all good, but to Patrick's point, and I want to uh, underscore this too, because I get it, you know, when we look at the other policies, you know, going back to that funnel, you know, growth controls up here, easy to implement. I don't think, you know, it will be what it'll be. Density, I think it's a really critical policy that we have. We have the tool to do it. And then you get down to occupants, and it's the one that impacts STR owners. Um, and you could argue, too, that are neighbors, too, from their yeah. perspective, probably the most and, and most near term. And so I do think, and maybe that's what, he's, Patrick, you're trying to share is like, you know, let's make sure that we're hearing from the SDR owners too, um, mm -hmm. and that you know, I, I just so I hear you, and I and if you've got either make the comments, you know, we're at time now, but like you can you can always follow up an email, um, or if there's you know um, calls, well, you'll hear from you'll you'll hear from me. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Well, that's I mean, the, the, this is this is going to be a big this is going to be a big deal. So there's going to be a lot of people talking about it. Everything else is awesome. This is going to be a tricky one, and the questions will be: um, What really is the need and the problem that reducing occupancy by two will solve? And um, you know, are our owners um, comfortable with the reduced uh, revenue that that will generate? And is the city comfortable with the reduced? Um, revenue that will generate. And I have heard and I've read all the information that you guys have provided in it, and you're providing one side and there might be another side that, you know, shares a different perspective. So, um, there you go. No, nope, exactly. there is a, this is what it yeah. is. All right. But the reason I'm here is not about that. Uh, the reason I'm here is for the comp, the comp plan. And I want to make sure I do my best to keep you all up to date um, on the things we're doing and more, and more importantly, I want to make sure that everybody who's creating a 20 year plan knows exactly the things that you all are doing and, um, you know, making sure that, you know, our vision for Manzanita, I, everybody on this call, everybody who watches this call later, I think has a vision for Manzanita in the future. That is, we want the best possible place, you know, uh, and we want to do everything we can to get there. So, uh, we're all basically on the same team and, uh, I appreciate everything that you guys do. Okay. Thank you. So I think on that note, we're good. Yeah. We're good. All right. We're good. I'll be in touch with everyone. Bye, Julie. Cody, Bye, you Julie. stay on. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Thank you, Patrick. Fine. Like yes. Should I? Would you like me to stay on for the little tool demo? Yes, yes please. Oh, I'm going to stay here for that. Um, okay. Oh, that was interesting. Let's take yeah. a little break and it's go to the bathroom.
Um, yeah, I mean, I first thought to send Cody a new link or something. He's got the link, but I'm just going to uh, bring it up and we'll just show it right on the screen. Okay. Are you still required? I started Fizz. Oh, I'm paying Thank much you. attention over the last year, the mm -hmm. short term. But so I may be like Joe Schmo sitting.